Um, so now we get to the chlorophyta. Chlorophyta are green algae. Chloro means green. Phyta kind of means plant. But green. Green algae. So, there's three groups of chlorophyta. And they are the Carophyceae, the Olva, or the Chlorophyceae, the Olvophyceae, and the Carophyceae. So, and there are some differences which you'll probably want to note. But right now, I'm just going to write down the names. Chlorophyceae, Olvophyceae, Carophyceae. I may have said Caro twice, but that one says Chloro at the top. Um, so Chlorophyceae is typically single-celled or very small. You can't see most of these with the naked eye. Um, and they have a phycoplast. Now, a phycoplast and a phragmoplast are pretty much the same thing. <coughs> the difference between the phycoplast and the phragmoplast is one thing. Direction. Um, so, a phycoplast, basically it's what's happening during mitosis and the spindle fibers are developing. In phycoplasts, the spindle fibers will develop parallel to the cell. In phragmoplasts, they're going to develop perpendicularly to the cell. So parallel phyco, perpendicular phragmo. Um, we see a phycoplast and chlor chlorophyceae. Um, these are going to be a really tiny green algae. Um, but what you need to know is they're single cell. They have a phycoplast, and they're your basic green algae. They're probably what you're going to think of almost immediately when you think green algae. Because um, all of you think it that enthusiastically. Let me have my beliefs. Olvophyceae are typically going to be much larger. Um, and they have a phragmoplast. Chlorophyceae is the only one with a phycoplast. The other two have phragmoplasts. Which is pretty cool. Um, so, that's what I've got so far. Carophyceae are the closest relatives to the land plants. And they have a phragmoplast. They can be small. They can also be large. So that's pretty cool. Um, but what separates them from being truly a plant is they have no vascular tissue. Coleochaeta, which is the closest living relative to the land plants, looks like it has vascular bundles. But they're are no vascular bundles there. It's actually just, I think it's their zygotes getting ready to burst off and move away, um, if I'm remembering correctly. But what you need to know is it's not vascular tissue. So why are Carophyceae not plants? Because they have no vascular tissues. Which groups of Chlorophyta construct phycoplasts? Chlorophyceae. Which ones uh, have phragmoplasts? Olvophyceae and Carophyceae. So I just knocked out all of the green algae questions at once. I hope that's okay. Um, there were three in a row, and I just decided to do them all together. Up next is the two stages of photosynthesis. The two stages of photosynthesis are light reactions and um, Calvin cycle reactions. Um, the light reactions are also called light-dependent reactions. Basically, that means you have to have light for them to happen. They don't happen without light. They can't happen in the dark because there's no light there. I don't know how many ways I can say that, so we're just going to go with that many, because you guys know what light-dependent and light reactions mean. Um, so with your light reactions, and by the way, I'm going to use um, the abbreviation RxNS for reactions. You'll probably see that in chemistry. I'm just going to use it for now, because it's easier to, than writing out reactions. In Calvin cycle reactions. So, light reactions take place in the thylakoid membrane. 
or the thylakoids. And remember, all of this actually takes place inside of a chloroplast. It's just getting kind of down to the nitty gritty of where this actually happens. <coughs> so it happens in the thylakoid. Um, and in the light reactions, basically what gets put in is water. If I can write that right. Water and light energy. So that's, that's what goes in. Basically, your plant's sitting out in the sun. Got to have water. Water plus light energy. And after a series of complex reactions that all you really need to know involves chlorophyll A, um, you come out with ATP plus NADPH, which is a chemical that is kind of energy and helps kickstart things, and oxygen. That's what you end up with. ATP, NADPH, and O2. So, with the Calvin cycle reactions, those are going to take place in the stroma and for the in enter, you put carbon dioxide plus ATP plus NADPH. Remember that ATP is energy. And you're going to put those in. Carbon dioxide, ATP, NADPH. And what it'll come out with is G3P, which is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Just notice G3P. Um, that's the product of it. Remember that the thylakoids and the stroma are all in the chloroplast. The thylakoid membranes are stacks of, well, the individual stacks are called grana, but basically you've got stacks of thylakoid membrane and all those are having light reactions go on. Um, and then the fluid surrounding all of that is the stroma. And that's where the Calvin cycle reactions happen. So that's that. And that brings us right on to ATP. ATP is also known as adenosine triphosphate. Uh, it's pretty much just energy. It does cellular work for you. It does a lot of different things, and it's very important to actually living. It has three components. It has a central sugar um, called ribose, and it's actually a five-carbon sugar, and it's, um, it's the base of RNA. That's the sugar found in that. Um, and then attached to it is an adenosine group, which has like acids and bases. Uh, it's got a base called adenine, or I guess it's really more like of a nucleic base, but, or nitrogenous base, sorry. Um, which also is found in RNA, but, um, adenine is its base and it's called an, aden an adenosine group and it's like a five group attached to a six group and that's more than you need to know. Just know there's an, aden an adenosine, a ribose, and then on the other side of the ribose, there's three phosphates. So, that's where the triphosphate comes in. If one of those phosphate breaks off, it becomes ADP, and that's more cellular respiration, so you really don't need to know that. Just know ATP, adenosine triphosphate, has a ribose group, an adenosine group, and three phosphate groups. And... Um, ATP looks like that no matter what. Uh, you also talked about C3, C4, and CAM photosynthesis and the major, <coughs> the major differences between that. Um, C3 is what the majority of plants do. Uh, that's because they rely on um, temporal regions where it rains frequently um, or rains some. C4 are your explosive, no, I'm just kidding, they're not explosive. C4 plants are hot and dry, they live in those conditions, and CAM live in warm and dry regions. Arid is what it means, arid just means very dry. Um, and basically, 
that's one of the differences. The other difference comes in where the Calvin cycle takes place. In C3 plants, the Calvin cycle takes place in the mesophyll cells. And uh, mesophylls, one of the tissue layers in leaves, and um, it's where the photosynthesis takes place in leaves in plants. Um, in C4 plants, those mesophyll cells are much smaller and they surround these things called bundle sheath cells. And that's where the photosynthesis take or the Calvin cycle takes place in the C4 plants. With the CAM photosynthesis, it's not really so much the location as it is the time. And they use stoma and guard cells to open up and photosynthesize and they do it at night when it's cooler and they don't lose all of their water. So that's when they photosynthesize. And the, it's just basically one family that does CAM photosynthesis. Um, another difference is C3 involves like three carbons and C4 involves four carbons. That's why there's C3 and C4 plants, just in case you were wondering. CAM also, I think, uses four, but it's weird. Um, it's more complicated than you need to know. So, that being said, C3, mesophyll, C4, bundle sheath cells, CAM photosynthesis, time rather than location.